All right, so even though Logan Paul won his fight against Dylan Danis, I think somehow Dylan came out of it more confident than Logan. I mean, the next day, Dylan went on Piers Morgan and was talking about how he could beat John Jones and Khabib. And I know that's just kind of Dylan's character at this point, but this was definitely more of a humbling experience for Logan. You know, he did a podcast the next day, and you could tell he realized he proved nothing with this fight, and everything he had to deal with leading up to it was not worth it in the end. I mean, he even admitted that he regrets ever taking the fight, and he said he's disappointed in his performance. And also Mike Malak was even grilling him during the podcast and asking some tough questions. And Logan really had no response. I mean, Mike was comparing Logan's fight to KSI versus Tommy Fury. And he said their fight was much more intense. And you could tell those two just wanted to kill each other. But then when it comes to Logan, Mike said he can't think of anybody that Logan could face where he'd see that same intensity. And Logan didn't even really deny it. You see these two animals jump into the ring two f dogs the the fight is visually and and innately different between those two people versus the fight that we had just seen moments earlier you're talking about ksi and tommy, KSI and tommy fury a was clashing two, of they two wanted the animals. fight two guys that wanted the fight and every time their bodies hit together there was a sound and the sweat fight and they were just cracking that fucking right hand over and over and it was like yo one of these two is dead set on murdering the other person in the mm -hmm. ring and has no inkling of a non-desirability of staying in the pocket and getting the shit beat out of them to get it done. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and it, it, it I, in my mind, I'm saying to myself, I don't know who the opponent is for Logan where the fight looks like that. Mikey, I'm not that kind of athlete, which maybe is why kind of what you're saying, that boxing might not be something I'm going to pursue wholeheartedly. And you know this, like on the football field. And then Logan starts talking about how he's never really had that killer instinct, which I feel like you probably need in boxing, especially. So I honestly think he realized after this, boxing isn't his thing. Like Mike mentioned this a few times during the podcast, he kept saying Logan should have been more aggressive and he should have been able to knock Dylan out. And Logan had some excuses and he pushed back a little bit on what Mike was saying. But for the most part, he didn't really have anything to say. Like he didn't have a good response, which is pretty surprising coming from Logan Paul after his first win in boxing. Like you'd expect him to at least fake some confidence afterwards and pretend like he had this really impressive fight and then call out Conor McGregor or somebody. But it sounds like he just kind of accepted this whole thing overall was a loss for him. Like you know it's pretty bad when Logan Paul's yes man, Mike Malak, is questioning his boxing ability during a post post fight podcast after Logan won the fight and I didn't want to make a mistake and get caught on some dumb shit after beating by, his ass, for, ass for what? who because, knows I was because that's because that's what I want to ask I was waiting for him to throw but you up. saw what he was throwing and, and I want to ask you was because because this is the question that I think will come down to making decisions or having sentiment towards your ongoing boxing career Jake, Jake will get punched in the face right down the fucking pipe and until that whole shit is leaking all over him. KSI is not scared to get a hit to get hit. When you saw the 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 power or lack thereof that Dylan was putting on those shots, what was the reason why you were scared out of the pocket to stay in there and actually tear his head off? Because while I feel so blessed in life and there's an angel on my shoulder that somehow always has my back and helps me come out victorious. I also feel like sometimes there's an equal and opposite force on the other side that inhibits me in ways that are so inexplainable. So I think all of Dylan's trash talk and all of his pre-fight shenanigans definitely got to Logan's head. I mean, going into that fight, he was so scared of getting knocked out, which is understandable. You know, after everything Dylan did to Logan's fiance, if Logan went in there and lost the fight, that would be so embarrassing. And if he got knocked out, that would be the most embarrassing thing ever, possibly. You know, I think Logan would probably be done on the internet. I don't think we'd ever hear from him again. So Logan did try to make some excuses when Mike brought up criticism, but people know, and I think Logan knows, he's just not as good of a fighter as Jake or KSI. And also Dylan's trolling 100% worked and got to Logan's head. Had to do. You had a lot of trouble kind of splitting it open. You got through it a couple Mikey, times. I'm a counter puncher. I understand Everyone that. knows that. Every Shh. opponent who studies me knows I'm a counter puncher. When my opponent isn't punching, that's problematic for me.
trying to survive and not fight, it, it's, it's going to change the, the dynamic. Like, you just have your hands up the whole time. He just is avoiding the headshot. So, so my question to that is, we saw you wall bag him a couple times, which is, but what was your fear in really staying in the pocket when you knew that he wasn't throwing shots? Like, really staying deep in the pocket? Was it the eye, or what was preventing you from staying where you needed to be to get that knockout? Because yeah. there's a lot of people talking about it today. The fact that you survived, the fact that you won the fight, which you did in, 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 in pretty respectable respectable fashion, but weren't able to get the knockout is something yeah. that some people were talking about. I'll be honest, I was disappointed. It was my it was my first thought when the fight ended. I, I really wanted to knock this guy out, but me and you were talking about it. The way it ended might have been the best outcome because I, I, my ego would have been like, yeah, I knocked him out. But we got to see Dylan expose himself for the thing clown and disgrace the combat sports that he is. Yeah, so I think Logan is kind of coping there a little bit, especially at the end. I mean, saying that this was the best outcome is ridiculous. Like, he knows that fight did not go very well for him. But also, like he kind of said, he did not need the ego boost. You know, this man's ego is already big enough. And that's probably what led to him taking the fight with Dylan, which he admits he regrets. So this whole thing, I think, definitely was a humbling experience for him. Like, even though he just got his first win, he admits he didn't impress anybody and he is disappointed in his performance. And he had some excuses. You know, he's coping a little bit, but not as much as Dylan. A, a pride standpoint almost wants to just clear somebody's head off just to be like, okay, I did it. Now shut up. I have that knockout power. And it, to be honest with you, it, in my eyes, it kind of sucks that didn't happen last night because I think it would have checked the box for you where you could have walked away and been like, okay, I did that thing. It's a very accurate assessment of what's taking place. Like when people watch me box, sure, they're entertained. Sure, they're maybe, maybe impressed, but no one's like... He was born for this. He that kid's a real boxer. He got he got hands for days. It doesn't happen. No, he you landed scared. nine punches in six rounds. Yeah, I mean, but the thing I mean, was, that's not great, is it? It's because he was running though. Ian McConnor yeah. was saying it. He he was running. He I mean, was. He threw more fights at the end with the security guys. I was a handicap the whole time. He still he still beat you though. Yeah, but I don't like. Hey, he beat me in a boxing fight. Right. You know, so he beat me in an MMA fight. But even he, that's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? Come on. Nah. He's, he's, a, real he's a YouTube influencer. Yeah, so all this stuff with Dylan Dennis definitely made Logan Paul rethink a lot of things. I mean, after all this, it sounds like Logan is seriously starting to turn religious, which I guess seeing your fiance with 50 other men will do that to you. How, how can I go into this as calm as possible and not want to fight with the emotion? And this word kept coming to my mind, forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. And then... Man, y'all gonna laugh at me. The internet's gonna laugh at me, but bro, Jesus came into my mind. Let's I swear to God. I swear to God. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Let's go. I swear to God, yeah. dude. I was like, I was like, fuck. What a nice thing to hear on I was Sunday. Like, dude. Fucking it's about time. Yeah, so this is an interesting turn of events here. I wonder how serious he's gonna get with this because I mean he gave George Shanko a lot of shit for being religious. Maybe we'll see some reunion between them. I don't know. But let me know what you guys think about it all down in the comments. And then make sure you check out my Patreon account. There's a ton of content on there that's only available on Patreon. And I just posted a new video about Bill Burr's problem with Tony Hinchcliffe and the one appearance he made on Kill Tony that didn't go very well. And I also talked about Matt Reif. I gave my opinion on him. And I also talked about a comedian that was on the Joe Rogan experience that drank too much and might have had a stroke. So there's a lot to hear about on there. You know, if you want to keep up with everything, make sure you check it out. There's probably over 40 videos, and I post a new video every week that's about 20 to 30 minutes. So make sure you check it out. I'll put a link in the description, and then hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you at the next video. So that's how people see me? They thought I had a stroke on a podcast? Like, that's how they think I could actually have a stroke?